country's murder count climbed to 18 on the weekend, and police identified the country's latest murder victim as 47-year-old RBC banker Stephen Sherman. He's pictured here in an old episode of the ZNS television show Catching Gap Seed. Authorities say that the murder occurred in eastern New Providence on Friday night. According to reports, Sherman was approached by a male when he arrived home. The gunman reportedly exited a silver Honda vehicle, robbing Sherman of his cell phone and subsequently shooting him. Police say the gunman fled the area in a waiting vehicle accompanied by another man. Now, police have confirmed that a suspect is in custody in connection with this latest murder. After months of preparation, the National Stadium is now just days away from a spectacular grand opening. The new facility will host perhaps one of the largest cultural shows the country has ever seen. Clint Watson has a preview. The new Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium will officially open on Saturday. Youth Sports and Culture Minister Charles Maynard says the finishing touches are being made and all of the newly constructed road corridors surrounding the stadium will be open. The ceremony is expected to be grand in scope. Now for who will fill up the 15,000 seats, Minister Maynard cleared the air as to who will be invited. This is a national event. And just as Independence where the public at large is invited to attend, people are invited to attend uh, from all walks of life of the Bahamian society. One of the goals of Saturday's main event is to expose Bahamians to something before now unfamiliar to us, stadium life. The doors open at 4 p.m. Uh, we expect for people to be seated no later than 6 p.m. This is a stadium atmosphere, so uh, you have to come early and you have to be seated. Uh, there's a food court available for food. Uh, it's going to be sold so you, you can eat and, and we can have some pre-show activities so that um, we can keep you occupied until the actual official program starts and so we want Bahamians to come and enjoy this national event. This is something for all of us to be very proud of. We're going to have some interactive activities where uh, people, participants, people who are spectators will be participants in the show as well and so they have to be seated in time to be able to receive the items they need to receive to be able to participate in that, that particular part of the show. Spectators are expected to witness a show second to none, perhaps surpassing the cultural show of the 1973 Independence Celebrations. Minister says simply, it will be spectacular. It's about two and a half hours long, uh, the show itself, outside of the official part of the ceremony, and it includes a cast of over 1,200 people, um, Bahamians, people who are going to expose their talent of, of all sorts, um, choirs, dancers, singers, the whole nine yards. I think that it's going to be a show like we've never seen before in the Bahamas is you know in a stadium in order for something to look big it has to be bigger than life and, and the performances that we expect are going to be bigger than life. Clint Watson, ZNS News. The 48th annual Heart Ball has been dubbed a huge success. Supporters came out in large numbers and enjoyed good food and dancing, all in an effort to assist the Victor Sassoon Heart Foundation generate funds to help those people needing heart-related medical care. We spoke with the ball's co-chair Coretta Owens. We gave the Golden Heart Nominee Award to Ms. Madri Davis for her years of dedication and charity throughout the organization in the Bahamas, especially with the Girls Guide. And we also gave to co-chair Portia Nordage, um, volunteer of the year for serving on the committee for the last 18 years. And um, again, she's co-chair this year and we're so grateful to all of our members who, who help us throughout the year. Now Marjorie Davis says she was elated to receive the Golden Heart Award at Saturday Night's Ball. I am appreciative of the fact that they have recognized the work that I've done over the many, many years. And I only wish that there would be others who would realize that it is so important to be of service to others. We are here not for ourselves, but to help others along the way and we should do as much as we can for as long as we can. In other news, overall births are down in the Bahamas, although the rate of live births is up. And according to the Department of Statistics, the number of foreign women having babies in the Bahamas has also decreased. Now, this is the first time the Department of Statistics has produced such a report. We get more in this report from Clint Watson. Most children born in the Bahamas are to unmarried women. That remains the case for the past 40 years, and the first ever births report released by the Department of Statistics Sunday confirms this trend. Back in 1970, this group represented 29% of all births. Up to 2009, this figure more than doubled, growing by 62%. 
Births to this category of mothers remain the largest annual natural increase to the Bahamian population. Teenage pregnancy is also down. The birth rate for that part of the population ages 10 to 19 years old decreased significantly from a high of 32.4 in 1970 to a low of 17.6 births per 1,000 females in 2010. What's also significant is that 30% of live births in the Bahamas back in 1970 were to women of foreign origin. 40 years later, this group of women have decreased significantly to 17.7%. The reports highlight and note that in 1970, when the population of the Bahamas was about 170,000, women were expected to have an average of four live-born children throughout the childbearing age. Four decades later, with the population more than doubled, the number of children to women has decreased to two during their lifetime. The Bahamas recorded its highest reproductive rates in 1970 when the birth rate peaked at 28.8, or nearly 29 live-born children per thousand population. This rate steadily declined to 15.5 in 2010. Now women ages 20 to 29 years old accounted for the largest proportion of births. The general fertility rate, which is the number of live-born children per 1,000 female aged 15 to 49, was highest in the country between the period 1970 to 1985. From the 90s, the fertility rate fell well below its highest level of 128.66 to 50 live births per 1,000 women in 2005, with moderate increases from 2006 to 2010. In 2010, the Bahamas recorded 61 stillbirths or fetal deaths. This number is some 56% lower than in 1970. This is the first time the Statistics Department has produced an analysis of the reproductive trends and patterns for the country over a 40-year period in one volume. Clint Watson, ZNS News. Welcome to tonight's edition of The Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Altafiz Munnings. Let's take a look at what's making business news today. In order to give back to the community, the Bahamas Association of Compliance Officers needs volunteers to participate in the College of the Bahamas' job fair set for March 8th. Faculty officials need help providing information to college students on the compliance industry. The 14th Annual Grand Bahama Business Outlook all set for this Thursday at the Grand Lucan Resort in Grand Bahama. The focus, identifying spark plugs to get the engine running. President of the Council's Limited and organizer of Grand Bahama's Business Outlook, Joan Albury, stated that Grand Bahama is in need of motivation for their future. Presenters, she says, will identify areas of opportunity that Grand Bahamians will be able to benefit from. In international business, the price of oil has reached its highest level since June last year due to rising tensions over Iran's nuclear program. One month Brent crude futures rose $1.14 to $120.72 a barrel on Monday. U.S. crude oil rose $1.93 to $105.17. From regional business, E-Woman magazine is packing its bags to go to the White House temporarily. The Pan-Caribbean publication will be a part of a regional Caribbean reporting tour on women's empowerment at the end of the month to travel to Washington, D.C. and Atlanta, Georgia. During the week-long program, E-Woman will be meeting with U.S. government officials, non-government organizations, think tanks, and private sector representatives. Remember, you can send us an email or join us on www.znsbahamas.com or become our friend on ZNS's official Facebook page. And that will end tonight's edition of The Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Altavis Munnings.